Let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about how we can use Bootstrap to style our page. As you can see, all I've done here is just added a heading and a paragraph, and some styling is being applied to this page. But we're going to want to take advantage of a lot of the other features that are available within Bootstrap. How Bootstrap works is it's very class dependent. So you're going to need to understand how the classes work in order to take advantage of Bootstrap. If you go to Bootstrap and you go to the document section, you will have a sub menu. Here's the hamburger menu, or if you're on a larger screen, it'll just show up on the left hand side. And this is going to give you all sorts of information on how you can use Bootstrap. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go into the layout section and we'll learn about containers to start off with. Containers are basically the most basic layout element in Bootstrap and they're required when using the grid system, which is part of Bootstrap. Containers are basically used to wrap content and add some padding to the content. They can also be used to align the content horizontally and center it on the page in the case of a fixed width layout. This page is going to give you information about how we can use the various container classes, but I'm just going to go into my page and we'll start working with this. If you want more information though, the Bootstrap website is a great place for you to go so that you can learn all about the different types of containers and how they're going to work with your web page. I'll go ahead and I'm going to select the content that I've created on my page and I'll just cut it for right now. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to wrap that content inside of a container. So I'm just going to make a main tag and this tag could really be anything and I'm going to assign a class of container to the main tag. Then we'll simply go ahead and paste in the same h1 and paragraph within this container item. If we refresh the page now, you're going to see that we get a little bit of spacing on the right and the left. Now my page is not very complex. If we go ahead and open up our developer tools and check out the page, you can see that if I go into a various mobile view, everything is shrinking. It's not really displaying the way we would expect it to. The reason why is because even though we're using Bootstrap, we still need our meta tag that makes the page responsive. So we're going to need to make sure that we include the meta viewport tag. If I save my page now and we refresh, you will see that now the page looks more in line with how we would expect it to look. You'll notice that the amount of spacing on the right and the left is going to be dependent on the size of our screen. That's actually built into Bootstrap. So as I resize my page, you can see how the page is kind of jumping to these various breakpoints. When we use the container class on any element, it creates a responsive fixed width container. The width of the container is going to change at the different screen sizes, as I just showed you. If you want more of a fluid container, then you're going to use a class of fluid. So let's actually just create a, another element and I'll just use a div for this. I'm going to give this a class of container dash fluid and then we'll go ahead and add a H1 and a paragraph. If I save the page now and we refresh, you will see that we have two sections of the page. The fluid area doesn't have the same amount of spacing on the right and the left, but it does go ahead and act in a responsive way. You can see instead of the content jumping to the various breakpoints, it has more of a fluid type of behavior. When we use the content dash fluid class, we are creating a container that has a width that is always going to be 100%. It doesn't matter on the device or the screen size. If you simply use container, your web page is going to change based on the built-in breakpoints. If you want more information on this, you can look in the documentation. There is one other way that you can create your containers, and that's using the container-small, container-medium, container-large, etc. If you look at this table right here, it's going to show you where the various breakpoints are going to occur. We'll go ahead and we'll create one more div on our page and we're going to go ahead and we're going to change this to container-sm. 
If we look here, you can see that container-sm, it has these built-in breakpoints, 540, 720, 960, 1140, and 1320. This is basically going to do the same sort of thing as the default container. You can see all the numbers align, and this is where the items are going to change. But if we change this to container-medium or container-large, then the changes aren't going to occur until these specified numeric values. So actually, let's change this to container-lg. I'll go back to my example and I'll refresh the page. Here is my new container. And if we resize, it still is going to be responsive. But if our page gets wider than the specified width of 960, you can see how the content in this div is going to kind of max out. It will still jump to the other breakpoints, but it does act in a fluid manner until it gets to that large breakpoint of 960. And once it gets to that breakpoint, then it's simply going to increase based on the other breakpoints that were specified within Bootstrap. So there's a couple of different ways in which you can incorporate the containers into your project. They are all going to allow you to create a responsive page, but they will interact and work a little bit differently. So keep that in mind as you build your project and depending on the type of behavior that you want with the containers, you'll use these various classes to be able to control how the container is going to work.